multiple sides of the story, told by the people who survived it. I'm 33 and I have lived all of this. And there was a gunshot. Then I heard Dominguez screaming. We don't have jobs, we don't have anything. And now you come and you break down our homes? Because my question was going to be to the Once Upon a Time, Once Upon a Time in Iraq team, like, you know, I've done some documentaries in the past, but nothing of that, that scale or quality. And I was just wondering how, on, in, in your case, how, how it was formed, like how, you know, to what extent there was a journalistic script beforehand, to what extent you discovered it, discovered the <laughs> argument. Like, hey, yes, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> there was no script. I think Will, well, Will can join me. Will can just butt in when, when, um, when he likes. I think what's interesting is um, James has this sort of vision and he's such a brilliant, instinctive director that he does not work from scripts, but he kind of knows what he sort of wants it to be. <laughs> and then, so that makes, that's why the interviews are so brilliant. So in answer to your question, there was kind of, the form was completely discovered in the edit. And um, I've done quite a lot of experience, I have a lot of experience with archive and James and Simon hadn't. So I start in this quite a different way. They, they tend to block it out in um, interviews and, and sort of for the scent, for the logical sense. And I tend to go through the archive and go, oh, wow, like, oh, this is brilliant. And then I just sort of throw stuff at it. And then I kind of do it scene by scene. But in the end, it was really useful to have us both doing our different styles because it, it they, they kind of meshed and then it, and then it the series found its kind of level would you agree well I think that's totally. and then when you came in you came in I totally. think working for about two or three weeks I think when you came in so the background to this is that James had asked me to cut in I said no I, I, I don't want to do some sort of weird thing about <laughs> Iraq it's not going to be an interesting thing and James went no it is going to be interesting I went no nah, it's not going to be interesting and then I walked in and saw the first 20 minutes what Simon cut. I thought, fucking hell, this is extraordinary. I mean, the first 20 minutes that of that thing that Simon had done, which is basically, you know, repositioning history, repositioning that, and it was amazing. And then that then let me, or let us all sort of enjoy the next 15 weeks of, of cutting, basically. But I have yeah. to say we had also excellent assistant producers and I know I bang on about her all the time but Miriam Walsh no, Miriam, 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 Miriam Just, was the absolute kind of like centerpiece of that whole experience what Miriam does is she she will search out really obscure archive and Miriam kind of got she just would get so excited wouldn't she will she like, and there's this yeah. and her her enthusiasm was so infectious that it would it would sort of buoy you up you know it would carry yeah. you kind of swimmingly but and also in a journalistic way where she basically I, I tried to when, when when i first started cutting the episode i started cutting it with with sort of bombs here she was you can't put bombs there <laughs> she was just really she was like she was so journalistic and actually it, that's what is the amazing feat of the series actually that nobody really knows that everything is sort of told in completely chronological there's no kind of like fake bombs every there's no fake bombs in the in the series at all none and miriam was was the was the gatekeeper on that it's great and james was james sort of like handled her and it was yeah it was great it was an amazing experience we didn't know they can't read mission accomplished yeah seriously a first-hand account of a war that changed our world once upon a time in iraq on bbc2 and iplayer